All right, well, price cuts and naming and shaming providers that charge too much are among the options being considered to rein in runaway childcare costs. Let's bring in Education Minister Jason Clare now. Jason, good morning to you. Just yeah. so you know, it's not an easy morning for me. All the oh, Queensland team uh, lost over the weekend. and. I don't know how I feel about it, actually being at work today. You need, um, so you, need nice. of, <laughs> you need a bit of therapy, mate. No, I do need some <laughs> therapy. And then also the RBA lifting rates, potentially savings mm. are gone. Feels like the wheels are falling off everything. Maybe we need a Chinook <laughs> helicopter to fly over you, mate. Oh, <laughs> no, we don't need... That's the last thing we need. Really, <laughs> gets, no more really gets props. me going. <laughs> All right, no um, let's talk education. Uh, we don't uh, yet know the full extent of the damage AI could do. Um, I think South Australia in particular um, have been doing a fair yeah. bit in, the, in, the, in that process, but where do you stand on it? I mean, we're still a little bit nervous about it? Well, this is not going away. Mm. You know, this is like the calculator or the internet. Yeah. We've got to learn how to use it. Private schools are using it now. Kids are using it right across the country. They're using it to do their homework. Mm. The key thing is how you use it. Mm. You know, we want to make sure that you don't use it to get marks you don't deserve. We've also got to protect the privacy of children as well. Make sure that if you type something into ChatGPT that it doesn't spit back an ad to you on TikTok. Well, how do you do all of that, though? Because it's advancing, you know, at a great rate, perhaps mm. not one that you can keep up with. Oh, we're playing catch-up, you know. To, to be honest here, we're playing catch-up. This was all launched in November last year. Education ministers are meeting on Thursday to have a look at what are the rules of the game, mm. what are the rules that we should put in place to make sure that it's used properly, but that you protect the privacy of kids. So, for example... If you're going to use, you saw that story the other day about Milo the dog that teaches you how to do maths. Mm. If you've got a product like that in primary school, teaching kids how to do maths, let's make sure that they don't sell that information onto a third company, yeah. a third provider, uh, that can then use your information to sell you something else. And, and, yeah, and then the parameters um, are such that, that if you go too early and there's too much information, you're, when, when you're doing it on the run, um, you, it's hard to get that back. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree with that, you know, but we're, we're playing catch-up right now. Back in the day when we were little, people used to knock on the door selling you Encyclopedia Britannica, yeah, right? right. Mm. And then the internet blew that away. Yeah. You know, this is, uh, this is a version of the internet that sort of bashes everything together, smashes it all together, mm. does the homework for you. And if we don't get it right and it's misused, then, then that's not good. But if some students have got it and others don't, then that's not fair as well. So there's a lot of work. It's hard to legislate, put legislation around it though, isn't no, it? No, but what you can do is you can say if, if a school has a contract with a provider to use something in the classroom, then the rules are, the conditions are that you can't sell that information to someone else. Mm -hmm. and, it, and then that's going to be ironclad? I mean, you can't guarantee it won't happen. No, that's, that's what's got to happen, right? Mm -hmm. Who wants to see their children using technology and then having it misused? So this is one of the things we'll talk about on Thursday. Despite your best efforts, um, the ACCC uh, has revealed Australians pay more for childcare than anywhere else in the world. Um, that hasn't quite panned out the way you thought it would? No, no. What this report shows is that basically prices exploded between 2018 and 2022. You know, this explains why we were talking about this during the election, why this was such a red-hot issue. Mm. Prices in Australia would, went up by double the amount of the rest of the OECD. Um, the childcare changes we made in July, they're having an impact. They've cut the cost of childcare on average by about 14%. So if you're on a combined income of, say, 120 grand with one child three days a week, then that cuts your cost by about 2000 bucks a year. So that's good. But this report, Carl, says there's a lot more we've got to do, including mm. potentially naming and shaming some of those operators that charge excessive fees. Yeah, well, well it's... Yeah. Mm. No, you go. It's that report, but it's also such a difficult time for families at the moment. So those costs, I mean, that's simply not enough. A lot of people still cannot afford, particularly in regional areas, to send their kids well, to childcare. This is the, apart from the mortgage or the rent, this is the biggest bill that a lot of families pay. And so cutting the cost for more than a million families mm. is a good thing. But what this report says is there's reforms we've got to make as well. Mm. That the childcare cap doesn't really work. Four years ago you had one in ten centres charging above it. Now it's one in five. Mm. That you need to name and shame the operators that jack up fees excessively. Mm. And it also suggests that we should be looking at things like direct price control. Have you got the economy at the moment? Because I think there's a, a great deal of nervous jokes aside at the start. Mm. Uh, the RBA meeting, another, another rate rise and, and all of our savings have basically yeah. gone. Another rate rise is going to put serious pressure on Australian yeah. households. Uh, Australian families are doing it tough mm. right now. Anybody with a mortgage is doing it tough. Anybody that goes to the supermarket mm. knows that as well. The, the good news, mate, is that over the course of the last year we've seen inflation tracking down. We're also seeing wages now going up for the first time in a long time, 
unemployment's low as well. You know, unemployment with a three in it is 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 better than and anyone then we've got expected. Petrol prices, mm. with, all, 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 all of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I didn't mention that, but that's a fair point yeah. as well. You know, I'm not saying people aren't doing it tough. They are. Um, but some of those big indicators are starting to head in the right direction. Look at you and your cool shoes today. I didn't even clean them, mate. <laughs> look at this guy. Yeah, they look a bit too clean. We need to stomp on them a few times. You can go. Go on. You hang stomp on, hang on, on, Jason. Hang on. Hang on. Look, look up, mate. Look up. Look up. I can't help it. <laughs> I feel like the crocodile sounds coming. <laughs> Great to see and there wasn't even a love bite joke there. No, I know. Right. We'll save it for next time. A love bite. <laughs> hey, I like it. You're watching today. Good to have your company. Australia's consumer watchdog has lifted the lid on the burden of childcare costs on families, revealing Australia is some of the most expensive in the world. The ACCC report found Australian parents are paying nearly 80% more than families overseas. To discuss, let's bring in mum of two and founder of Working Mama, Karina O'Brien from Melbourne. Karina, good to see you. What's your reaction to this report? I think it's great that the report is being released and investigated. It's a very consultative process. But it's also good to see that the government hopefully implements some of these with the ACCC seeing that Australian parents are actually paying 16% more uh, compared to other OECD countries, uh, you know, with uh, incomes going towards... Sorry, 16% of income going towards uh, childcare compared to 9% mm. in other countries. We also need to rip the Band-Aid open on the providers that are really taking advantage of families with the recent childcare increases. Well, that's right. And the government um, has maintained that it's doing its bit to lower costs. But in reality, those costs have in some ways gone higher than we ever thought they would. Um, given that, and Jason Clare was on our show earlier mm. saying, well, hang on, let's do a crackdown um, on some of these rogue um, facilities, but is that is that going to happen? Do you have any confidence that'll happen? No, childcare in, uh, fees have actually increased 27% over the past four years. And although the childcare subsidy is actually meant to, you know, try and cap prices, and in fact, it's actually not doing that. With the recent increase uh, subsidies, price uh, providers have ended up charging up to 15% more. And then this has had a significant impact on families that have already got a really mm. high cost of living. And when we're also then having, I'm hearing all the time of families then saying, is it worth me working? Mm. All my money is just going towards childcare. And really, at the end of the day, we want to be encouraging mm. female workforce participation, not taking it away from them. And because there's also benefits for females, you know, particularly working and allowing them to, you know, have career opportunities, but also long term around, you know, superannuation because women over the age of 55 are the biggest group of homelessness and it's really sad that this is happening so yeah. we need to really give quality education to all children. And that is a big factor. I hear so many of my girlfriends discussing that about whether it's even worth sending their kids to childcare mm. or whether it's worth them going to, to work and this is the problem that we're facing every day in Australia at the moment. The other issue is whether or not their children are then missing out on the education they need and the development they need if they can't afford to send them to childcare. 100%. And the Australian Development uh, Census in 2021 recognised that one in five children were uh, developmentally vulnerable when they started school. And for First Nations children, this increased to two in five. So we really need to make sure that, you know, people aren't having to make these choices, but children are actually given the best start possible so that they actually, you know, we can overcome some of these inequalities and these intergenerational inequalities equities that we have. So okay. it's really D important. Just finally, what are we going to do about the cost side of things? Um, is there any answer? Look, when we're looking at certainly around the world with, with other countries such as Canada, they're actually looking at implementing childcare to be just $10 a day. And this is due to supply side subsidies. So if we can actually then, you know, pay the providers rather than, you know, and actually reduce the co operating costs rather than actually uh, having these expenses onto parents. We also need to also improve their support for educators because without them, we have no industry. We can't then work mm. as well. So we really need to look at the wages and the support for educators. But what's really important is that we have universal, affordable and equitable childcare. So, we, you know, particularly in those first five years, because we know developmentally it makes such a significant impact sure that also has long-term mm. um, positive impacts. Good on you. Karina, thank you so much. Appreciate Thanks, it. Karina. A lot of work to do. Mm -hmm. Still